All right, we are here with Mark Verheiden, one of the key players in some of the most popular television shows and movies, maybe you heard of them, uh, Heroes, Battlestar Galactica, and The Mask. How's it feel to be a part of such cult icons as Battlestar Galactica, Heroes especially, and one of the shows that propelled Jim Carrey, Mask? Well, it's great. I mean, you know, it's funny. I came to the whole writing thing more as a fan than uh, I started as a fan. So the fact that I'm able to actually now work on all the things, many of the icons that I loved when I was a kid is fantastic. Smallville working on Superboy, Battlestar Galactica, um, Heroes, which is a whole new sort of range of heroes, but still is a comic book based sort of thing. Um, the Mask, which is based on a comic from a company I worked for way back when. Time Cop, which I created. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a blast. Uh, you know, science fiction's been very good to me, and comics. <laughs> well, I mean, this is obviously the best. You know, uh, how should I say, the best area to be a part of that and promote and feel the kinetic energy from such genres. Right. No, it is. It's really always fun to come here and feel the enthusiasm and the energy. You know, sometimes when you're a writer, you're sitting in your room all by yourself typing away. Even on a TV show, you spend a lot of time just thinking and working. But you come down and actually see people enjoying the work is fantastic. You get to get that feedback from the fans. Mostly good, sometimes bad, mostly good. And uh, that, that part's just great. It's, just, it's great to see the enthusiasm people have for this genre material that wasn't always there. Now, did you expect Heroes to just explode the way it did and have such an incredibly huge following that it has? Well, you know, I started on Heroes with season three, so I wasn't there with it at the beginning. I will say, when I heard they were doing a show called Heroes, I thought this is either going to be a huge hit or a complete disaster. Um, they've tried comic book shows before on television, and some of them hadn't worked. But I think Tim Kring and the other people that are working on the first season came up with a fantastic paradigm that just worked like gangbusters. Um, you know, I was really excited by that. I, I love the show, which is why I'm working on it. And uh, so, I guess that answers. I mean, I. I I wasn't surprised per se, I think I was surprised at how it took off though, which, you know, you, no one can ever predict a hit hit. You, you know, bet. Hit, so. Now, for the script for The Mask, did Jim Carrey stick to pretty much verbatim the line or did he just kind of get the feel of it and just go off in wild directions? Um, as often happens in Hollywood, um, I was not the first or the last writer on The Mask, so um, in terms of what he stuck to or not, um, I sort of had left the project before they made it. Um, I did the interim draft where uh, I introduced things like the uh, Cuban Pete song and things like that, so it, it's funny how this business works. Sometimes you have a piece of it. That said, I think Jim stuck to the script fairly closely because I've seen the scripts, and um, it was like his second big movie. It was Vase uh, Ventura, I don't think it even come out yet when they were making the mask. So uh, he was really lightning in a bottle too, just the fact that we, we captured that moment in the mask. That was great. Well, very cool. You know what? I heard that you have other really huge connections here locally in San Diego yeah. besides Comic Con. It's good to have connections uh, like my niece. Jenny Hamill. Jenny, hey, good to see How you. Good you? morning. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. So you guys talking a little uh, film, a little... Uh, oh, a little shop, you, you betcha. Yeah. How does it feel to have fame and talent run in the family oh, like I'm this? I'm so flattered that she would show up. It's just great. <laughs> He's the famous one. Oh. So I'm a huge Battlestar Galactica fan. I also work at Channel Channel 6 with one of you guys, Andy, and uh, a lot of guys that are stationed, huge Battlestar fans, so I think it ups my uh, ups my cool status to be able to talk about the show. But I don't know, it was kind of, it's funny, I've been talking with Mark about how sci-fi has just really expanded, it's more mainstream now, and the fact that me and my friend who's an architect and her husband who's a lawyer sit around and talk about Battlestar and kind of like the moral, moral dilemmas and quagmires and things like that, I mean, I just think it really shows that sci-fi has just kind of moved over into this other realm where just popular consumption is just increased when it comes to that. So, oh, yeah. You bet. I mean, with every all the genres that are intermixed here within Comic Con, it's taken subculture and pretty much almost eliminated that and just have everything's popular culture now, nothing's sub anymore. Right. You know, and I've been covering Comic Con. This is my second year here. And I mean, 100,000 people downtown San Diego, sleepy San Diego. And you know, Mark's been going to this since the mid 80s when it was like. A couple of nerds? No, well, no, you know, maybe 10,000 or 5,000, I don't know, but it was at the old convention center downtown. Um, it certainly has grown and it's certainly become a huge thing. I was going to say, the interesting thing to me is, is when I started in the business, comics were looked down on, science fiction was still looked down on. 
1989, the Batman movie came out, things started to change. The first Batman movie mm -hmm. <laughs> with Michael Keaton. And um, it's just interesting. It seems like guys like me who bought comics and sci-fi when we were kids and were big fans and felt like sort of the, uh, you know, being looked down on, we now run it. Basically, that's why you're seeing heroes in Battlestar and uh, Smallville and all these shows is because, and and Transformers and these huge movies, is because the people that grew up with it now are in a position to actually do it. And that's, that's and a lot of people love it too. Well, I mean, right now, with yeah, television has been very much permeated, movies, do you think this is just the top of the iceberg? I mean, there's so much to be farmed within comic books, graphic novels, and anime, so we probably still have a lot more to see. And I, yeah, I think there's a lot more to, to come out. I also think that they're looking now at graphic novels that aren't just superhero or science fiction genre. You've got movies like Road to Perdition that came, was a graphic novel. You know, you've got Ghost World, which was a graphic novel. So um, the other thing to look at is that graphic novels aren't just superheroes or science fiction. They are actually the whole broad panoply of uh, human human life, anime type stuff is coming out now. So you'll have your Transformers, but uh, I think there's all sorts of material that's not genre based as well that'll come from graphic novels too. So for people that love comics and love graphic novels in that world, and I started in comics, uh, I've written Superman and Batman and all that stuff, um, it's a great time to uh, sort of be in the world that it loves that stuff now, as opposed to sort of looking down at it. Now it's, it is pop culture now.